Hey guys, it's me again, Kelly. So I'm to read an article I found online in the website, and information will all be in the description below. So this is um debunking myths about methadone and crack. Very interesting read. Let me begin. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay, see me okay. I know some of my videos are low. I didn't know my other camera was being like that. But anyway, let's begin. So, debunking myths about methadone and crime. Um, let's see. Methadone maintenance therapy, MMT, is a opiate, opiate, Replacement Therapy, ORT, that has been used in the United States for over 50 years to treat chronic opiate addiction. Now, let me stop there. I did not know it was used in the United States for over 50 years. That's news to me. Anyways, uh, methadone prevents withdrawal symptoms and drug cravings, blocks the epiphytic effects of other opiates again i have dyslexia i'm sorry if i ever mispronounce words or if i stutter you know i'm not really a fan of reading out loud but anyway um effects of other opiates and reduces the risk of a relapse to ill Ill use of opiates sorry again Infectious disease, transmission, crime, and overdose deaths. In spite of its demonstrated public and individual health benefits, methadone is associated with tremendous social stigma. Frequently, not in my backyard, and I am... NIMBY campaigns block development of methadone treatment centers, MTC. The reason why I'm reading out the letters because in the article it just says like MTC, okay. Um, in common, in communities most heavily impacted by opiate dependence due to common misconception that MTCs are associated with increased crime. In this article, Boy Adel provide compelling new evidence that debunks myths that geographic areas surrounding methadone treatment centers are associated with crime. Instead, they find the inverse is true. MTCs are associated with lower crime rates. In the case of methadone, U.S. federal regulations require that individuals receiving MMT be seen and dosed on a daily basis at least intentionally. Not intentionally, but like, you know, when you first start going. Again, I just like see I'm very sorry. Um, it follows logically that if MMT reduced crime, having MMT in close proximity might also be associated with reduced crime in areas surrounding methadone clinics. However, this phenomenon has historically been difficult to measure, and the creative interdisciplinary deals by technician techniques that Boy L utilize provide robust scientific evidence to debunk the popular myths myths popular myth that MTCs are associated with crime. Again, I'm so sorry for the stuttering and mispronouncing words. Um, though, in a list was limited to Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore 
would has among has amount no has among the highest rate of injecting drug users and opiate dependency of any city in the country. The geospectral coding technology void employee helps frame the importance of methadone treatment in a bordered social context by forcing less on individuals who struggle with addiction and more on the environmental in which the environments in which they live and are served. This approach will be important for advancing evidence based interventions evidence-based interventions in neighborhoods with unmet needs for ORT. This and this analyst that combats stigma about addiction treatment with the robust scientific analyst has important public policy implications of Baltimore and elsewhere and could not be more timely. The United States is currently experiencing an epidemic of opiate addiction, much of which is fueled by increased by increased access to prescription opiates. Increased use of prescription opiates have been associated with high rates of over overdose and prescription painkillers are now the second most prevented type of drug abuse after marijuana. The new wave of opiate use affects more young people than ever before and has contributed to the dramatic upstrung and overdose deaths. Unintentionally, drug overdoses are now the second leading cause of accidental accidental death in the United States. Prisoners are at high, particularly high risk of heroin addiction. Approximately 24 through 36 percent of all heroin addicts, or over 200,000 individuals, pass through the United States criminal justice system each year. Other all the research highlights limit access to ORTs in places where individuals addicted to heroin need it most, including in correctional settings across the U.S. Um, given the city city of addiction services available in many correctional settings, offering methadone in community settings with higher rates of opiate dependence is critical for reducing drug-related health harms. It is, it is unresponse or unreasonable to expect that a medication alone will be a pen percent of or opiate dependence without addressing the complex social behavior and structural factors that contribute to rise rates of opiate dependence in the U.S. However, if the Affordable Care Act is upheld by superior Superior Court of the United States, Millions of underserved people with opiate dependence may have access to health insurance that pays for pharmaceutical or pharma, pharmacological treatments for opiate dependence. Again, I'm sorry, I had dyslexia, so some words may not sound right, may not make sense, but you get what I'm saying. Um treatment for opiate dependence that may be that may be a game changer for addiction treatment by allowing more allowing 
by allowing for more widespread use of ORTs. <laughs> Moreover, access to ORTs is critical, critically important <clears throat> for reducing mor morbidity, morbidity and morality, particularly for those involved in the criminal justice system. Boyd's study underscores that offering treatment in community settings community centers is not associated with increased crime. Rather, MM, MMTs were associated with low crime rates. In order to combat a new wave of opiate addiction in the U.S., we need as many treatment options as possible. It is no longer acceptable to limit the availability of methadone maintenance therapy by the fear of crime. It's important this important finding should contribute to important public policies discussing about how best to extend methadone and other ORT treatments in the communities with greater unmet needs of addiction treatment. <clears throat> I agree with this article 100%. I think that people need to stop looking at drug addicts as these horrible people, criminals, we deserve to die or be in jail. You know, people stop, need to stop looking at us like that, okay? They need to start looking at a person who had been abused or some some underlying reason why they are an addict. They didn't wake up one day saying, "Oh, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go try heroin. I'm gonna become an addict. I'm gonna shoot heroin." No, we did not wake up one morning saying that. Okay. Um. Another thing is, there should be more methadone and suboxone, or even if you want to go cold turkey, in the clinics like that, there should be more in areas like <clears throat> where I live now. I live in Torrington, Connecticut. There's a methadone clinic and there's a suboxone clinic. There's a bunch of sober livings and rehabs in town. The one Alright, so the closest one after touring that I'm, that I'm that I know of is Bristol and then Hartford, which is like a half hour drive away. So if you would leave between Bristol and Torrington, and there's somewhere between there where you can't drive or there's no bus, and you don't have insurance or medical cab will pick you up, how are you gonna get to your clinic to get help? You know what I'm saying? There should be more more clinics and places to get help within a reasonable distance. There shouldn't, you should not be going like a half hour drive, 45 minute drive to another clinic because there's people who walk, people who don't have money for the bus and stuff like that. And they should be able to access health, um, help from clinics, methadone, suboxone, whatever. There should be one in so many miles. There should be free clinics for people who don't have health insurance, who make too much money, who can't afford it. You know, there should be so many... The, the epidemic now with opiates, there should be so much more help out there for people when there isn't. There should be more clinics for... Say I live here and the clinic's an hour drive away. It would take like freaking three hours to walk there. Three hours to take a bus there, you know what I'm saying? Like, there should be closer clinics. Like, um, my mom's friend lives in Farmington, New York. I mean, when she sells her house, she wants me to go up there. Now, I have to pray and hope that the state will grant me, um, vacation bottles. Because the closest clinic to her is in the same town. But, however, they don't do MTA. They don't do medically assisted treatments, you know? So... I get, I go three times a week, I'd be screwed if I don't get approved. I wouldn't be able to go because I can't get those nowhere. And if I don't get approved, how would I go? I can't. There should be so much more help out there than there is. Especially because it's such a big epidemic, there should be so much more help. Anyways, guys, I'm going to end it here. Um, if you agree, comment below. I'd like to hear your points of view on 
what's going on and what you think how many clinics or whatever should be around how many miles you think should be between clinics um also don't forget i don't know if i posted it on here but i am looking for people who are in active addiction or recovery or had a family member who was an addict who is not even an addict at all who's not a drug addict who's addicted to food sex gambling anything i want to hear your points of view i want to make a video of your story or your point of view so please comment down below or contact me contact me i had made I made a Facebook page. It is the same as Facebook. It's Kelly's Life as a Recovering Addict, but it's K-E-L-L-Y apostrophe S. Life as an Addict, um, a Recovering Addict at Facebook. And then my Instagram is Kelly Hunt 216 That's at Instagram. Um, I also have a Facebook group. It is Addicts Helping Addicts, I think, I, if you believe that's the name of it. Um, but if you would like to join or follow me on Facebook or Instagram, feel free, feel free, feel free to contact me on either of those. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Remember, don't, don't give up hope. There's hope. We do recover. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment this video if you liked it. And if you want to see a video... Or an idea for a video for me to do. Let me know in the comments below. And I hope you have a wonderful day guys. Bye.